The holiday season is just around the corner and retailers are gearing up for the busiest shopping period of the year. Holiday spending is critically important to the U.S. economy and also dominating retailer profits. And while we've been hearing that shoppers are starting to pull back and be a bit more selective with their purchases this year, is that going to be the trend that holds this holiday season? And what does that then tell us about 2024? We want to bring in Ben Laidler. He's e our global markets strategist, breaking all of this down. For us and Ben, we're going to get the CPI print tomorrow morning, and that's going to be the latest reading, obviously, on inflation, maybe a little bit more insight into how the consumer is thinking about these prices. What are you expecting to hear from some of the retailers that are reporting this week and what that's going to tell us then about the holidays? I think the consumer's in pretty good shape. I think we're going to hear that from the outlook from, from the retailers. Um, clearly not as good as we've seen, you know, over the last three, six months, but you know, this is the story that keeps giving. This is why the U.S. isn't in recession. Um, and so this holiday season is the next big test. And I think all indications are that sales are going to be up three, four, five percent. That's a slowdown, but it's still a pretty good number. And what stands behind that is a still decent jobs market and wages that are now rising uh, above inflation. So scratch the surface and you can pick holes in that. Consumers are, you know, they're looking for deals. They're you know, they're trading down a bit, they're sacrificing on other things. But fundamentally, this late in the cycle, uh, it's very reassuring. Ben, how much of this also continues to lean on the employment situation? I mean, if we look back even to the consumer confidence data, even though it fell again in October, one of the things that continues to be brought up even among the mindset of consumers is where they still have the opportunity to move from one job into another or if they feel comfortable about their discretionary income right now. Yeah, it's absolutely crucial. If you don't have the money in your pocket, then you, know, you have nothing to spend. And, and, and I think it, you know, it's not only that, but it feeds through into, into the confidence. You know, yes, the labor market has been cooling, unemployment's up a little bit, but we're still posting an average 150,000 new jobs. And crucially, inflation has come down enough, and we're going to see it again tomorrow, where I think we're going to come down you know, pretty decisively to you know, much nearer 3% than 4%. Uh, you know, real wages are decisively rising here. And I think those are you know, key offsets to, you know, the doom crew that think, um, you know, the consumer's about to capitulate here. But Ben, this is, you know, not every household is doing well. We have student loan payments coming back. Inflation still remains a lot of problem for, for households. Why do a large percentage of consumers in this country still feel so depressed about their financial future? Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and don't get me wrong here. There's a, there has been a big slowdown. Christmas last year, we grew seven to eight percent. So you know, growth rates have, have declined significantly. You ask consumers, you know, how many of you are only going to buy if you see a deal? It's you know getting on for two thirds. Uh, you know, the growth rates for online, which is cheaper, are running at twice uh, the growth rates of, uh, of, of bricks and mortar. Uh, you know, dollar stores are coming in as the third most popular place to shop. I mean, scratch the surface, and you know, to your point, you see plenty of signs of consumer stress. But again, you know, we're very late cycle here. Um, you know, I don't think we're too far away from the Fed being able to, to, to cut interest rates. So we may be sort of running on fumes, but I think the overall consumer remains you know, fairly resilient. Ben, so stress consumers, some households struggling in this country. Do you have a fear of missing out on the rally we have seen in markets the past month? Well, luckily, we've been in it. And I, and I think that's been the message from, you know, the, the early arrival of Santa Claus over the last uh, over the last couple of weeks. You know, we unwound two months of underperformance in basically a week. So I think you've got to be in this market. It's a reminder that you've got to be in this market. But I think the fundamentals are pretty good. And I think they've been good for a while. I think, you know, this vice of high bond yields and high oil prices has eased off. Um, that's allowed markets to, to perform. Uh, we've refocused a little bit on the fundamentals. I mean, the earnings recession is over. And I think that earnings story continues to build from here. And we're pushing a little bit on an open door of, on the technical side. I mean, this is the best seasonality of the year. People are holding too much cash uh, going into 2024. And, um, and buybacks have just restarted after, after earnings season. So I, I don't find it difficult to make the bull case. Ben, what's going to lead us higher then? Well, I think that plus... Well, in terms of, sorry, sorry, in terms of the leadership that we'll likely see in the markets, I guess, where do you see the most strength coming from, at least initially? So I think for now, it's all big tech, right? I think, and it continues to be big tech, just as it's been all year. I think, you know, what big tech gives you is 
you know, it's leading the earnings recovery today. It's those 30, 40 percent earnings, you know, growth numbers versus basically nothing for the rest of the S&P 500. A and B, you know, we do have most of the slowdown still ahead of us. So people are going to be worrying about earnings. They're going to be worrying about cyclicals. Uh, I don't think they're going to be worrying about, uh, you know, the different growth dynamics of big tech and the fortress balance sheets. Uh, so initially stay with tech. But I think the more we get into next year, the closer we get to the Fed cutting, the more we move through this sort of soft landing, I think people are going to be looking at the, the sort of cheaper interest rate sensitives. So real estate, first and foremost, it's, it's the big you know, REIT conference at Narit this week. That's where this is where people, I think, should be doing the homework on something I think that we could really be looking at again next year. Um, you know, it gets tired a little bit with the brush of how bad offices are and the, uh, the structural issues there. But, you know, that's only 5% of the, of the REITs market. Uh, but also banks, small cap, the further we get into next year, the closer we get to the Fed cutting, I think looking at those sort of bombed out interest rate sensitives and rotate out of the sort of defensive growth, big tech names that we've been in, um, and will probably continue to be in for the next uh, month or two. Ben, once we get towards, you know, the last six weeks of this year, roughly, you're going to start to see low volume that, that typically takes place. So by when do we need to get to a certain point in the S&P 500 to go against the case for the, this just being a bear market rally? Well, so if, if you just believe the seasonality, that typical Santa rally doesn't come till very, very late in the year. And I think every year it just gets anticipated because everybody knows that everybody else is repositioning into you know, the 20, 2024. I don't think this is a bear market rally. Um, you've definitely had some short covering with people being caught short when this oil market bond yield vice sort of eased off. But mm -hmm. you know, we've just had a very strong earnings season. 80% of companies beat. That's a six quarter high. Uh, the economy, we just came off 5% GDP growth. Um, and we're getting visibility of the Fed beginning to cut next year. And if I'm wrong, that we get a harder landing, I think you know, inflation coming down to close to 3%, that puts the Fed put back on the table. So that's your insurance policy, I, I, I think, if I'm wrong. Um, so I, I think there's a lot to play for next year. And importantly, I think as people get, you know, begin to look at that, if you're sitting on 5% cash, which is what your average institutional investor is today, I think you're going to put a little bit of that to work as you look ahead to double digit earnings growth and interest rate cuts next year. That takes the market up. Ben Laidler, eToro Global Market Strategist. Ben, great insights and analysis as always. Thanks so much for kicking off the show with us this morning. Thank you.